Thanks for joining us for our first Argyle audio blog post. This week, we're talking with award-winning strategist Andrew Stewart, who recently joined the Argyle family as VP of Creative Strategy and Client Innovation. Today, we wanted to warmly welcome Andrew and discuss how we use his experience and expertise to help identify, plan, and find the right channels to execute the right solutions for our clients. We also talk about what excited Andrew about joining the Argyle team and how planning the right strategic and creative solution has evolved and will continue to change in the post-COVID world. Welcome, Andrew. Hi, Tara. Thank you so much. That's quite the, quite the introduction. I, uh, I hope I can match that. I know, we'll keep the hype up the whole way through. <laughs> Looking forward to it. <laughs> well, before we uh, kick in here, I think uh, everyone's really would like to know a little more about your journey, a little more about you. So would you be able to kind of describe your experience that's brought you to this stage of your career? I don't want to date myself too much, but uh, but I kind of started out um, in PR when uh, PR wasn't digital. So uh, much like many of our alumni, um, we went to I went to uh, Humber College for the PR program, and I absolutely loved it. But I fell in love with the art of storytelling, and not necessarily the execution of uh, of traditional public relations. So I went back to Carleton University, where I took uh, mass communications, just to broaden my understanding of communications theory and kind of get into uh, behavioral communication and and uh, and those kind of subjects. Really, just to to find my storytelling art a little bit uh, further. I went to Publicis and led the largest content team in Canada. Um, and that was really interesting because that was the kind of the birth of content being not just social, uh, content kind of being part of the greater marketing mix. Um, and that allowed me to really kind of hone my strategic chops in places beyond uh, digital and social. I started freelancing and uh, and had some clients such as Labatt and a couple other large uh, consumer brands. Um, and that was wonderful until I decided I wanted uh, a kind of more solid team and and to join a truly integrated agency that that believed in the art of storytelling and and had a really omni-channel approach to uh, to great work. So you've done everything basically is uh, what you're saying. Basically, I've, I've done everything in the kitchen sink. Everything. <laughs> but it's amazing, though. It's because it's basically you've seen the entire evolution from like traditional to the way digital is now. Yeah. Transition. Yeah, exactly. And I think the thing that's really kind of, you know, been uh, a stabilizer through that is the art of storytelling and understanding that stories don't just happen in one channel, they happen in an omni-channel way um, and how they come to life in, in creative, in earned, in uh, digital, you know, in engagement um, in so many ways. That's what tells a really beautiful holistic story. And I feel like Humber probably deserves credit for how many of their graduates we employ at this shout point. Out, shout out to Humber. Shout out to Humber. <laughs> Alrighty. And um, I think basically, could you expand on what is it about Argyle specifically that really excites you and why was this kind of the next step in your journey? Sure. So uh, I was really looking for, you know, like I said, an integrated agency that that believes in the right channel for the right uh for the right problem and the right solution. Um, I was really impressed with um, Argyle and the creative shop, which uh, joined the company a couple of years ago, along with the digital shop uh, and the engagement shop as well. The amalgamation of all these companies into the Argyle brand was something that I thought was uh, really forward thinking and provided the grounds for a strategist like myself to really have that great canvas to tell like, wonderful stories on. Also, what excited me about Argyle was, you know, the, the breadth of the knowledge of the team and the clients, you know, everything from agriculture to consumer to deep health integration. You know, I'm looking forward to working on a lot of health clients again, you know, and into uh, into the private sector as well, as long as as well as working with uh, a lot of the Aboriginal groups in the Western provinces. That was something I really uh, loved uh, about the client roster. And then on top of that, you know, I think. Um, when I was talking to Dan, our president, I was so impressed with how Argyle uh, 
uh, doesn't just look for the right solutions for our clients, but looks for the right solutions for society as well. I thought that was a beautiful kind of, you know, manifesto for the company to have. Um, always thinking about, you know, how we can authentically um, help our help our clients and our brands achieve their objectives, but always keeping in mind, you know, how does this work within society? How does this leave society a better place afterwards? The other thing I really, really loved about Argyle was, you know, I think COVID's had, you know, a dramatic shift in everybody working from home. And, and we know that there's huge talent all throughout Canada, you know, from coast to coast. And something I really admired about Argyle, which I think is really specific to Argyle, is the integration of offices. A lot of the other agencies that I've, that I've worked for had what they call like long corridors. But, uh, but in no way were they truly integrated. You know, I think the best part of my day is is getting on a call with, you know, uh, our creative shop in Winnipeg and, and our engagement shop in, in Vancouver and, and the client uh, the client headquarters here in, here in Toronto and having those full national meetings and, and, and meldings of the minds and, uh, and expertise uh, all come together. So I'm looking forward to moving out west at some point and, and joining the team out there. But uh, I really just love the fact that you can you know, work anywhere in Canada on any account. It doesn't have to be centric to Toronto. We truly are a national agency. And I, and I love that. It really is like a huge advantage that we have there. Just, uh, and having the different perspectives across Canada too, because I think Toronto, we're guilty of uh, being very Toronto centric. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But there's so much good work all across Canada, you know, and, and with having such a plethora of clients from smaller clients to government clients to huge consumer clients, there's no there's no one epicenter anymore. It's it's uh, it's all online. And and Argyle was way ahead of that before uh, before COVID hit. Well, it's actually a fantastic segue into my next question, bringing up that <laughs> wee little pandemic that's happened in the last year or so. You may have noticed it. I haven't. Um, I haven't. It's like, oh, what's that? <laughs> um, it's uh, basically thrown our whole jobs into disarray and really changed the way we work fundamentally. So, I mean, I, I kind of love your perspective on where do you see the biggest changes and what has been that impact? Sure. So, you know, I think it's it's definitely changed the way that we're working, right? Like. I have worked with you on a number of projects now and, uh, you know, not to pick favorites, but I love working with you, but I've never met you. Uh, and, I find, you know, and, and we're even in the same city. So, you know, it's fundamentally changed the way the way that we work. But like I said, Argyle was already kind of set up for success in that area. So from what I hear, it was it was relatively easy procedural wise to kind of get into that working from home model. But in terms of clients and, and the programs that we're putting out there, things have really changed as well. You know, I think people expect more from the companies that they're that they're engaging with and that they're, you know, purchasing products with and that they're supporting. They're looking for authenticity and they're looking for products and brands that that align with their values. I think COVID's really been a, a big eye opener for what people hold dear and what values we really have as Canadians. It's done, it's been beautiful to see the kind of country coming together, but I think it's really brought people's attention to putting your money where your mouth is and, and supporting companies that do good within your own country. Um, I think that's been, you know, quite the beautiful change. And I think it's something that's very needed. It's holding, you know, it's holding the hands to the fire in terms of uh, corporate culture and, and making sure that, you know, uh, they're doing not just great work internally, but but they're also kind of believing the same mantra that Argyle has, which is, you know, like leaving society a better place. The second thing, which, you know, I, I don't have to speak to you, uh, you know, heading the, working with the digital team so inclusively, but everything's digital first, you know? All of our out of home budgets, you know, it all came to it all came to digital and and uh, and traditional PR as well. I think there's been such a spike in in those terms um, because I think there's such a fundamental way of directly reaching our customer at their home in their hand on one of the many screens that they're interacting every day. But uh, but also, you know, with uh, earned media and traditional by capitalizing on trust in in uh, in publications, traditional publications, and and getting in um, our clients and our programs into those kind of third party endorsed uh, areas, you know, um, and having that all work together 
uh, seamlessly and and transition differently and and having the weighting of each program kind of you know change throughout change throughout the timeline that we're that we're kind of going through you know everything's changing so quickly that you have to be malleable and you have to be able to optimize along the way I think digital is a great place to do that you know being able to change creative be able being able to change uh, messaging kind of uh, at a moment's notice that's that's been a that's been a great change. Um, and, uh, you know, I just read an article on Forbes that talked about how we'll be going, uh, there'll be an influx of more, you know, kind of traditional uh, marketing methods once we're out of this. So, you know, being agile enough to, to be able to jump on that as, as soon as we can. I think the rise of the new customer experience, too, uh, is something that I think has really propelled change in the last year. Um, you know, obviously, XM shops have been having some trouble and having to rethink about how that uh, engagement and experiential experience comes to life in our consumers' ways. You know, whether that's doing uh, kind of influencer outreach, but to uh, our customers uh, to gain information and, and you know, user generated content or, or uh, you know, surveying for opinions uh, to help guide our programs. That's been that's been a really interesting kind of thing to maneuver around. So the customer experience evolving and and changing into not just an in real life experience, but how we can bring that into digital and traditional and and all other kind of uh, factors within the marketing mix. Lastly, I think you know, and I touched on this before a little bit, but the rise of health and the idea of of health, not just personal health, not just you know physical health, but societal health. Yet again, kind of you know, arcing back to that uh, that understanding that companies need to be authentic and and need to be uh, you know being proactive in creating positive change within our countries. Um, that type of societal health has been something that I think we really have to think about, and I know I am, in all of the plans that we put forward. Like, how does this, how does it, how does this improve people's health, whether mental, physical, or societal? That's, those are the things I think have changed the most uh, over the last, you know, year, year and a half, really, um, and will continue to evolve uh, and change over, uh, over 2021. And do you foresee when we eventually get back to a new normal, which I say in air quotes, if we ever do, um, do you foresee this kind of shifting back to the way it was before? Do you think it'll last? And is there anything you really hope stays permanently? I think, first of all, let me say normal's boring. So, you know, uh, I, I, I welcome some stability, but I hope we never get back to uh, things being, you know, the beige and normal society that, that, uh, that we once had or maybe long for a little bit. But uh, the thing I really hope that continues um, post pandemic is uh, is probably two things. One is yet again, that authenticity and that holding companies to, uh, to that societal health measurement um, and letting them tell you know, those authentic experiences that have really imp improved people's lives through their brands, products, um, and, and campaigns. Uh, I really think, I really hope that we hold on to that kind of emotional tie and don't go back to superficial messaging. The stories that you and I and, and the team are crafting together are so uh, multifaceted and deep in terms of their emotional connection to the consumer that I really think that we, I really hope that we don't oh, go back to oversimplifying things and, uh, and you know, kind of picking a channel and, and, and using old tactics and just going, you know, in a linear direction. I, I, I think it's far more engaging and, and far more um, results driving to have this, you know, more holistic approach to marketing and, uh, and societal health. Maybe as a final question, just to leave for you, um, when you look back at your time at Argyle, what are you really hoping will be your legacy? Let's do the real big picture question. Uh, what do you want to accomplish? What are your big goals? The dream, if you will. Oh, I love it. That's a good question. <laughs> um, what do I want my legacy to be? I, I I would say you know, I think bringing bringing deeper integration, bringing you know uh, more risk taking, uh, more bravery. Um, you know, Arkell's done such a great job throughout the years. Uh, 
of, of you know, telling wonderful stories for our clients. And I think all I hope is, is to bring in some new clients and, and do some brave thinking with them and, and to challenge clients. And, and also, I think, to follow, you know, kind of the Argyle uh, mantra of pushing clients to think about how they're interacting, not just with their customer, but with society. Like, I truly believe that that's, you know, it's very unique to Argyle and, and it's something that really resonates um, inside of me. And, and like I said, that was one of the reasons I, I longed to come to Argyle. Um, so I'm really hoping that I'll be able to kind of push that with, with all different sectors of clients so that, you know, we can leave this world uh, a better place and with happy clients. I think that that's the ideal dream. Well, I'm inspired. <laughs> <laughs> I hope everyone else listening is inspired as well. But um, I just wanted to thank you again for joining me. Um, I'm really excited to kick off this uh, Argyle audio blog series with you. I think you're the perfect candidate to kick us off. And uh, But thank you for chatting with us. And uh, hopefully there's more talks in the future. And I'm looking forward to uh, seeing all the work you do with us. And I'm looking forward to working with you and, and the rest of the team. It's going to be great. Uh, thank you so much, Tara, for taking the time to talk to me. Oh, my pleasure.